Hi, and welcome to Food Farms and Chefs. I have, I have, I have I, the joy to introduce. Um, <laughs> sorry, my my uh, technical difficulties, but I have the joy to introduce the owner of Keg and Kitchen, Kevin Meeker. We just lost you there. The... Oh, you can't hear me. No, no, no. We got it. We got it now. Just okay. All right. So I'm going to start again. Okay. Welcome to Food Farms and Chefs. I have the joy to introduce the owner of Keg and Kitchen, which is in Haddonfield, New Jersey. Um, Kevin, <clears throat> sorry, Kevin Meeker and his chef, Bill Elmer, who are joining us for the show today. Welcome to Food Farms and Chefs. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. No problem. So you, as my, uh, prior to us hopping on, as my, as my co-host Jean Blum had in, uh, mentioned, you have been in the industry for a very long time, starting, I believe, in 1970, in the 1970s. Um, uh, somewhere around there. Yeah. So what actually inspired you to, to get into the restaurant business? Because it is a long career path that you followed at this point. And, you know, you've obviously opened several restaurants and still have some of them running. Um, but what brought you into this industry? I'll give you a very short version because it's, it's, it, it's really too long, but uh, I always work in the business. Uh, and when you get work in this business, you get the money. Uh, I went to college, planned to be an architect. Um, in between starting graduate school, I went to a Mexican restaurant, met the owner, and it was like Field of Dreams, build and they will come, and <laughs> the rest is history. And I opened up my first Mexican restaurant, opened two more after that, wanted to take that nationwide. My partners had a different idea, which was my sister's, so I left there and opened up another restaurant. and. Couple other restaurants after that, and Bill and I actually met years ago in Old City when I had Philadelphia Fishing Company. He worked at the Omni right up the street, so we've known one another for quite a while. Mid nineties, yeah. Yeah. So you have a little bit of a history now. Has has Bill um, been a chef for you prior to this, or is this his first time working at one of your restaurants? First time, but okay. we've known one another for a while. <laughs> um and so I want to also you know give a nod to your wife because I know that she has owned the restaurants alongside with you so when did you meet her and did you meet her through the industry or did you meet her just by oh, chance actually she introduced me to the owner of the Mexican restaurant we met in college oh that's <laughs> sweet so we've been so together cute. for yeah it's so cute <laughs> and we worked together and everyone it, you know, it's hard working with your wife, but we we pulled it off for all these years. <laughs> I mean, I think these guys have to um, put up with us like kids, you know, like mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, well, it's very, it's the, this is a business. It's it's unconventional. So you're kind of used to that, that, you know, that dynamic. You get like family in a restaurant. So kind of used to it. Yeah. Um, all right. So I know that Easter is obviously a big thing and Lent is a very large thing. And you previously did, you know, were running the Philadelphia, um, fish company. One of the things that I wanted to touch base on is you're doing a throwback to the menus, um, some of the menu items that were related to that company. So, you know, what brought you? brought about you making that decision and is there a hint for maybe another restaurant opening up like can, I re can, I can i chime in here one second and lay the yes. groundwork for those because everest we're we're slightly different ages yes so i'm going to tell you that philadelphia fish company was one of the great anchor restaurants in the city of philadelphia it was really i loved going there through the years um, and then, and I and I love the Omni as well. Had a great little jazz lounge, uh, jazz piano lounge in there. But uh, you know, love that. But so you know, when we go to the you know giving a little tribute, it's like you know saying that we're giving a tribute to Lebec Finn or we're giving a tribute That's to Joe Chevrolet or anything like that because Philadelphia Fish Company 
was really an amazing restaurant in the city of Philadelphia and laid the groundwork for a lot of copycats that came after that. Thank you very much. Nice to hear. Well, that's actually uh, one of the reasons a lot of people who come in here would say, hey, I used to come to Philadelphia Fishing Company. Um, so to answer your question, kind of two parts, I thought, well, people don't really think of us as seafood, so let's capitalize on that. People then realize I used to own the restaurant, people who didn't know that. And instead of, I talked, Bill and I talked with, uh, I talked to some old chefs. We talked about dishes they love and Bill put his twist on them rather than doing them exactly like we did back then. And then Bill had his own ideas. What would be Philadelphia Fishing Company be serving now if we were still there? Okay. And so that's kind of what we decided to do. And the lesson, no, I'm not going to open another restaurant. <laughs> I mean, there's always hope because, <laughs> uh, any... <laughs> you know, maybe, but no, I really, you know, don't think at this point. Because <laughs> I, I mean, I'm a seafood lover, like through and through. Um, you know, and if you do, you know, surf and turf, like I'm definitely like you have my heart. Yeah. But um, what are some of the menu items that you are offering? Since you know we are in still within Lent and still, you know, Easter is right around the corner this weekend. So. Well, so that was the thing. We, um, I didn't work there, but I was in the area at the time. So it was fun for me. It was, it was really nice collaboration because we almost got to step back in time and do dishes in the air of the nineties. Yeah. Mm. And, um, and we went through old menus. We talked to a couple other people. Um, I actually talked to, uh, my my fish purveyor and ask them like what were some of the things that you remember from this time so one of the things that had stuck out was uh the salmon um was a dish that was very popular it was uh panko crusted um redless potatoes and then um a little salad of uh red onions and cucumbers with dill some sour cream or dijon in there um and uh and then the plate ups of it on it was really fun i kind of threw it back i took a I took a page out of the nineties with uh, plate presentation and it was, it was fun for me because that's when I learned to be a chef and plate presentation. So we had done, um, we'd done crab cakes, very traditional. Um, we've been running for all of Len, um, the, the very popular um, seafood chowder, the Philadelphia fish company, uh, fish chowder. Um, and shrimp and grits was um, wildly oh, yeah. successful. Yeah. That was, um, that came right out. It was, I was going to switch everything up and, um, and that was a clear winner from week one. So I've just been running that. The salmon, um, I do a Brazilian, uh, moqueca, um, okay. with, uh, uh, palm oil, um, coconut milk, um, a couple of different chilies. Um, I use a uh, cod, um, shrimp and mussels in it with some yellow rice. It's really neat. Um, so it's delicious yeah it really fun, is. fun things and then we 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 have um available things on the menu that are only the uh, the black and mahi tacos um we do a uh a catfish po boy which um knocks it right out of the park yeah uh, yeah fun things and i saw that um i believe it's it, you also do not part of the Lent menu, but you have it on your menu is the mussels in a, a curry sauce. Yeah. The coconut curry. Yeah, coconut curry. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. You like you, you guys keg and kitchen is not that far from me for a drive. And I'm like, wait a minute. How did I not know that that was on your menu? <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not there like daily. Cause I love anything with curry involved. Um, and definitely, as I said, I'm a seafood lover, but some of, some of the other items like the crab cake, are you going to incorporate the, these, um, nods to throughout your regular menu? Like, are any of the items going to be incorporated into your regular menu that you offer? No problem. Yes. The answer is yes. Um, when, when we get a collaboration or if we run a special and um, and it works. I really let the guest kind of decide what is and what's coming back. We listen to them. We listen to the servers. Um, and as people start to ask, like, hey, listen, I had this here. 
um, when can I see that? So we will definitely, I don't know about a place on the menu, but um, special step in Yeah. I think the good thing about having, and I don't want to call us old, but seasoned uh, owners and chefs, it's not about us. It's about the guest. So, you know, we, we don't have to say, oh, I have to prove that I can do this because the dishes that you think everyone's going to love sometimes fail and dishes that you think no one's going to love take off. So um, yeah. that was really nice that we work well together. We get in fights every now and then, but we, we work out. Family. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> family. Yeah. anytime you have a family, like, <laughs> incorporated like in any way whether it's by blood or you know by choice um you <laughs> you're gonna like butt heads because opinions not everyone has the same opinion so um now i know obviously you still own like not just Ke keg and kitchen you also own other um venues as well are there when you opened keg and kitchen in i think it was 2010 or 2012 um, after, you know, having to close cork, unfortunately you reinvented the, the venue and turned it into keg and kitchen. Um, did you incorporate anything from your other restaurants and bring it into, into keg and kitchen? Not really. Um, you know, when we originally opened cork 2005, that was pre recession, the big, you know, recession that happened that knocked so many restaurants out you know, before the COVID one that, you know, that was the second knockout, but we survived both of them. Um, no, not really. I just wanted to, I was looking more for, court was, you know, kind of wine and a little more high end. And in 2007, eight, when people said, I have not spent any money anymore, we went more family. So really wanted to be, and that really was the winner. Because yeah. you come here with, my grandkids come here, and they love coming here, you know, and they're one and a half and three. So we have a lot of families, but we have a lot of single people. Uh, a lot of, I mean, really the spectrum here is all over the place. Wouldn't you yeah. say? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, moving forward, you know, beyond just like you, the menu, the venue itself, you have an indoor and outdoor space. So, you know, what, what can people, when they visit you, um, look forward to, especially with the weather, like changing and getting warmer out, are you going to, you know, throw some, some events coming up? Well, this week, I think, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, we have the square, um, uh, right across what's yeah. Yeah. Right and, uh, there's weekly events there. We benefit from that a great deal. People were able to walk right across the street, um, and they have parades. We have the Mummers coming up, I think, this week. April 29th is the Mummers. 14 bands going to be coming, starting in Haddonfield, and they're going to come right down uh, Haddon Avenue. So, and then I know one of the bands, I don't know, might be Quaker City, I don't know, is going to be playing here in the parking lot. Uh, but uh, then we have the Pride Parade, and we have the Summer Solstice, right. all these events that we do. Plus, we have the Beer Garden outside, which is uh, a great area for people to sit outside. And we have another area that we've just been working on with picnic tables in the parking lot, which is people love to, to sit outside. So you have both or come inside with the air conditioning, depending on what, you, what your preference is. Yeah. Now... I, obviously you're family friend friendly is the outdoor space also for for family friendly <laughs> yeah. and dog friendly yes that well that's what i was getting at is you know can oh, you yeah. can people uh, bring okay yeah, no problem <laughs> now aside from just the events that you know are thrown that you guys all obviously kind of get grandfathered into because you're along that parade route um, do you like have happy hour specials that you can offer, you know, people who are visiting? Well, at, yeah, every day, uh, two o'clock till five 30 happy hour. There's a small menu that goes along with that. Um, it's a $5 menu. We have, uh, their tacos on there. Uh, we have the wings on there. Um, this is happy hour traditionally and then through sporting events like if the eagles were on we were having we would open up that happy hour menu um with the phillies playing we're talking about putting something together with that while the, while they're on 
because it's it's a really comfortable place to come in. It's not real loud. It's not a huge sports bar, but it's a nice place to come in and watch the game and then eat something delicious and drink some beer. You know, you know I think that's too. Um, we get a, we get the people, the guests here who want to maybe watch the game, but it's not really what they're, you know, they, what they want to do. They don't want to be in a sports bar, but we have the TV so they can watch that. The happy hour, I learned from the best. And that was uh, Michelle Notre Dame who owned Cuvée Notre Dame at 17th and Green. I was his partner at the time. Uh, and he had the, the famous $5 menu. And we've kind of stuck to that. And you know, people love it. I mean, we have a $5 old fashioned uh, that, it just kills it. It's uh, and Mark, Matt Marks, uh, who is our GM, makes some fantastic cocktails. Yeah, uh, not mocktails along with cocktails. So we have both, which is good because I know yeah. like there's a huge trend on on uh, mocktails now. Yeah. Which is, you know, for anybody who doesn't know and is living under the rock, it's it's zero proof cocktails that are created and curated for people who would like to go out, enjoy themselves and but not, you know, indulge in the alcoholic side of of the the drinks. So, yeah, it works. Yeah. Uh, a five dollar old fashioned. I'm, I'm just like, I need to go there. I mean, you yeah, can't find a lot of killer. You can't buy the good cherries to go in there for that price. I mean, right? I, I yeah. bought a I bought a jar of Luxardo cherries yesterday. It was like twenty two dollars for the uh, ten ounce jar. It was like wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have regulars who come in just for the old fashioned, you know, little bite to eat. Three o'clock, they're here home by five. I mean, I 100%. I'm like him. I love old fashions and Manhattans. They're like my go-to drinks. Um, so the fact that you offer that. Now, what are some of the other, you know, beverage menu offerings that you have? Well, go ahead. Yeah, so the, um, I get involved with that because I bring <laughs> in the herbs and the, uh, and the nectars. Uh, uh, really fun margaritas. There's a strawberry basil margarita, I think we're running right now. Um, the uh, Matt's doing something with uh, with mango and uh, guava. Oh, yeah, that's that. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have my glasses, so I can't. I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the blood orange uh, gin and tonic. Yeah, nice. It's a great summer drinks. Yeah, and with this, with the weather clearing, I menu changes coming up um, without outdoor seating, like we were just talking. So there are items that stay on the menu. And then there are items that I'm probably going to be switching out and making them a little bit lighter. Um, I'm going to be doing something with uh, with a really nice ginger dressing um, on a Ooh. salad, uh, cucumbers, some iceberg, something um, crispy noodles, almost like an Asian flair on that. Um, right like now, an ahi tuna. <laughs> I would love that absolutely. So <laughs> the, uh, we do a um, a seafood pot pie right now, and it's it it's it's hard. So I'm probably going to switch that up, um, either do like a monkfish asabuco or run the uh, Brazilian uh, the moqueca, uh, the seafood stew uh, more readily. So some changes coming up. It week. sounds it sounds delicious. And I also want to mention the fact that you guys also offer brunch. Um, a lot of people love brunch. So <laughs> let's plug that in there too. And, and along with the brunch, we have the... I think after COVID, it may have gone up a dollar or so, but we have the $3 mimosa and the Bloody Mary. So, you know, what goes better than with uh, brunch, but a Bloody Mary. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a perfect, um, a perfect additive. And uh, I believe when I searched your site, you also, Matt had include incorporated the guava mimosa, which I've never okay. seen anybody do. So, Right. Um, that's definitely an interesting uh, twist on a regular brunch menu. Uh, Aaron, he did. He was doing some. Oh, well, we, yeah. I'm candying bacon right oh, yeah, now. Candy bacon. Um, so cherry. he'll take uh, hot cherry peppers and he's stuffing them with goat cheese, and then I'm doing candy bacon, and that's going yeah. on the uh, the Bloody Mary right now. And so, when can you guys expect me? <laughs> like, <Sunday. laughs> all the time. Get the Bloody Mary. I'll just eat the bacon. 
Um, all right. So I, I had a lot of fun speaking with both of you, but unfortunately the time is now up. So please let our listeners know where they can find you online and in person. Okay. It is www.kg, the letter N kitchen.com. And we're at 90 Haddon Avenue in Haddon Township, New Jersey, which is right between Haddonfield and Collingswood off of Cuthbert Boulevard. It's, it's a perfect. 10 minutes from the city. It's a perfect location and easily, uh, easily found on public transportation. Oh, right, too. Yeah. Yeah. West so. um, Patco, high speed line. Exactly. So thank you so much again for joining us on Food Farms and Chefs. And I look forward to digging into that menu. Yeah, please. <laughs> Looking forward to having you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Eugene. Have a great afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All righty. All right. And we will be right back after this short commercial break. Welcome back. At this time, it is a great honor and a wonderful opportunity to speak with uh, Mike Dalowitz. He is the founder and chairman of the 618 Hospitality Group, uh, as well as a tremendous serial entrepreneur that has uh, transcended so many different businesses. Uh, but now with the 618 Hospitality Group and one of his other endeavors in point of sale service, uh, Mike is bringing and is uh, co-founder and, and chairman of the Borscht Belt yeah. Restaurant in Stockton, New Jersey, as well as one that's going to be opening soon in Bucks County. Mike, welcome to Food Farms and Chefs. Thank you. Good to be here. So, Mike, um, you know, you've been involved in the hospitality industry uh, for quite some time as a, a true entrepreneur, but you've really um, got your, you know, teeth wet as an entrepreneur and founder of many different companies across the board in technology, in retail, in a lot of different things. And before we get into your partnership to uh, Form 618, tell our listeners a little bit about your background. Well, I am, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm an AA, uh, that, that's Attorneys Anonymous, 17 years recovery now. Um, so I started my career out as, a, as an attorney, uh, did some big firm practice for a year and a half, realized that that wasn't for me. I had a background in uh, nightlife and hospitality. I was one of uh, the big club promoters in New York City back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and uh, Decided to use my uh, legal degree more for um, branching off my connections over there. Got into uh, entertainment management, um, which was which was great, and uh, had my first opportunities actually working with some uh, TV chefs in the early two thousands, which was very interesting. And then I sort of went a different direction, and uh, um, I found an opportunity in the legal industry. Um, to do some services for lawyers. And uh, there was an area called electronic discovery or e-discovery that was a brand new area. And I saw some holes uh, and gaps in the industry and I decided to fill those and create some great um, outsource services and game-changing technology. And um, you know, spent a good amount of time over you know, 12 years in that industry, um, reaching uh, you know, uh, multi multiple companies to, uh, large exits from bootstrap. So um, that was always very interesting. And then I had an opportunity to figure out the rest of my life. And uh, I was, you know, it was veering more towards that food and wine and going back there. I got my degree uh, later, a few, few, few years back in enology and viticulture, and I was going to become a, uh, a winemaker and uh, buy a vineyard and some things got in the way of that. And I had a choose the whole new path in life. And, uh, you know, the, you know, this was right before the pandemic as I exited my industry and I had the world as my oyster to choose from. Well, so your partner with, uh, Nick Liberato, who, uh, for our listeners, hopefully you know who he is, uh, have been involved in, you know, some of the premier 
through television shows, Bar Rescue, you know, um, to name a few, um, you know, Chef Masters, just great background. A Philly boy, nonetheless, he grew up in South Philadelphia, took his love of food to the West Coast uh, to be, a, you know, when he was a surfer and uh, living out on the West Coast, comes back to the East Coast to, uh, you know, start his roots again. Now you and him have 618 Hospitality Group and an amazing restaurant in in kind of the throwing back, uh, you know, and paying tribute to the old Jewish deli. So tell us, uh, tell our listeners about 618 Hospitality and the Borscht Belt. Yeah, so, you know, after um, exiting my industry and trying to figure out with the rest of my life what I was doing, I was picking my kids up from Hebrew school. And uh, Rabbi asked me uh, what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And this was around February 10th or 11th, 2020. Uh, so right before the pandemic. And I said, well, I was thinking of going into the wine industry, but got some hurdles over there. But really, he, he says to me, what was missing uh, from your life that you would want to do all over again? And I told him about a story. And this all became this cosmic connection um, that I was supposed to, at one point, be an apprentice for a restaurateur, a big restaurateur in New York City, Miami, Vegas, L.A., named Jeffrey Chattero. And uh, that was that was a, a goal of mine that I really never hit and I wanted to get into eventually. And the rabbi says, look up. And I look up and it's the Chattero Sanctuary. I did not know that Jeffrey Chattero um you know, ha, you know, had a home in the area and had his kids grow up and get bar mitzvah there. And I thought this was an amazing, you know, coincidence. And then he says, well, you know, what else is a coincidence? I just got a call from one of our teacher's husbands, who is a big chef with the TV shows. And he's out in L.A. and he want, he's moved his family back here where he grew up and he needs a partner to come on board with him in order for him to move back here. And so Nick and I first uh met through the rabbi on uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day, 2020. And it was uh, love at first bite. You know, we uh, we hit it off. We were, um, you know, just similar backgrounds and, and likes and personalities and uh, just passions. And we, we said, Let, let's go ahead and do this. And uh, so we, uh, we were planning during that, that uh, you know, four week, you know, or so period uh, right before the pandemic, actually a, tri-level sushi seafood restaurant on the uh, Delaware River in New Hope, Pennsylvania. And we were in the middle of negotiating a lease. And by March 12th, uh, you know, we, we uh, the pandemic hit and we had to figure out the rest of our lives. And Nick already moved back here and we're sitting there six feet in my backyard with masks uh, trying to figure out what we're going to do over here. And, and we started, and we started thinking and he's like, well, what would you do? And I said, well, I have a background in, you know, technology and I think, you know, technology enabled, you know, concepts right now are going to be great, especially for the pandemic. We need to do something pandemic proof. We need to do something that has big scale um, and something that, you know, for me, that has big scale is something that kind of, you know, died, you know, many years ago that once what once was a huge area and uh, something that we both had passion about. And, um, you know, we, you know, we decided on, uh, you know, the need for New York bagels and great appetizing and Jewish deli. And he was, uh, you know, out in L.A., him and his wife used to go to Cantor's and, and Langer's. And uh, his wife was the uh, like that prototypical Brooklyn Jew that missed all the great food from home living in L.A. And, um, you know, so they had their 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 favorites out there. And, you know, he uh, always embraced um you know, with his children who are, uh, you know, growing up Jewish and attend uh, Shirami synagogue and his wife, you know, the Jewish um, culture and religion and food. And we just we thought this is going to be a home run. Um, I told him about the Borscht Belt, um, which, you know, he wasn't so familiar with, but my family owned many of the iconic um, uh, institutions out there or managed some of them as well. And I said this was this would just hit home. Um and we decided, well, how are we going to do this? Stockton, right, beautiful area, you know, right across the river. We were able to get it open. We, we were like, this is going to be our test kitchen. And went from test kitchen to something really important for the community. 
And um, un unfortunately, um, you know, the uh, the building we were in had some other things going on and we're actually wound up having to close that that store, um, uh, even though we were supposed to be expanding and moving it to Newtown, Pennsylvania, which will be opening in a few weeks, which is very exciting. But the concept was a home run. The numbers were, were great, you know, and and we decided that we were going to go into um, open this up and then go into franchise mode, uh, which has been uh, a lot of work to get there. But Nick is, I would say, the most one of the most passionate, talented chefs I've ever seen. He's what he's done with this genre of food in um, his take on the classics or and perfecting those or reinventing some of the classics or adding some nuances uh, out there. It's just been, I've, I've, I've enjoyed this food over and over. And every time there's a new dish or sandwich or fish that gets imported or something else that comes in for me, it's just, it, it's again, goes back to love at first bite. He truly is an extremely passionate chef. So in that you have a great partner. We have uh, some mutual friends who also speak very highly of you, uh, Howard from Pita Chip. So a very similar concept uh you know i'm good friends with uh peter chip and, and uh when i hear one restaurant tour one great restaurant tour talk about the quality and the greatness of the food you're producing it's you know it's always a great uh testament to what you're doing there and i know newtown is going to be a fabulous location for you i'm excited because i'm only a few minutes away so uh, you're really looking forward to that and and doing that you know, you yeah, know. Howard Howard's a Howard's a friend of ours. Uh, Pita Chips an amazing institution, and uh, I told Howard I might have to borrow that tahini shake in Newtown from from him because it's just it's it's tremendous. I always have, end my pita chip meal with a little tahini shake over there. Absolutely, absolutely. He's a he's a yeah, great guy. His office. I am the director of operations for a catering facility and and brew pub and, and numerous other things. And we have some office space and uh, his office is right next to mine. And so it's, it's very nice to see him on a regular basis. And we often talk about, you know, your business and how great it's going to be there in Newtown to have that so close. Um, I told him now he won't see me very much up at Pita Chip because to get to Pita Chip, I have to come through Newtown. So I'm just going to stop at the Boris Belt and forget it. <laughs> But, fill uh, your belly, fill your belly at the Borscht Belt Deli. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And you know, you guys have the the videos you have, the the throwback, the tribute, the love letter from Nick to, you know, the the roots of of the deli industry is just really a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous thing. So tell our listeners a little bit from your perspective, you know, what the features of the Borscht Belt are. What and and for our listeners who don't know, the Borscht Belt um, is a region um, kind of named after the region in New York where all the large summer, um, you know, camps and, and summer getaways were up on the lakes up there. People refer to it as, uh, you know, the Jewish Alps or the Borscht Belt. Um, so, you know, I love that we have that throwback. But tell our listeners a little bit about, you know, what they can expect. Yeah, so go, going to the Borscht Belt, I like to, you know, in, in a nutshell, it's almost like Jewish Johnny Rockets, right? You, you come in there and the it, it, it feels like the, the 50s and 60s, the colors, the vibe, the music playing as well. Um, we actually, in this location, um, took time to procure uh, many of the artifacts of the Borscht Belt, and that's going to be on display sort of as a mini museum in this location of uh, real, real uh, um, um, art and artifacts and uh, memorabilia from, from the Borscht Belt, which is going to be amazing. And, uh, um, you know, when you, when you get to us, it, it's, it's a combination of a few different things, right? You're, you're going to come in, you're going to have the vibe, but more importantly, the, the food, it, it's whatever Nick, um, doesn't make in house and i'll get into that in a second we we've spent many 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 moons uh, and time sourcing the best of the best so uh, mostly from new york city uh so our bagels we have a uh, long-standing partnership with essa bagel in new york city 
So we get fresh baked Essa bagels daily, which is absolutely tremendous. Um, our Bialis are from Shelsky's of Brooklyn, uh, oh. fresh baked, um, amazing Bialis out there. Our appetizing, a little above the, your, your general appetizing and fish that you get out there. Uh, and the fish that we import is from Samaki, which is up in the Catskills. It's just truly a, a cut above over there. The baked goods as of now, and we're going to start making more of them in house, uh, come from uh, Rockland Bakery uh, in New York. Uh, they have fresh delivery daily to us. Um, uh, we have a special chocolate babka that everyone loves, and that comes from a a uh, hundred year old Hasidic bakery in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, that we get fresh, which is just truly amazing. And uh, um, knishes and um, blintzes from Knish Nosh in uh, Forest Hill, Queens. So, you know, we've taken a lot of time for what we don't make in house to really source the best of the best of the best. And when you come in for breakfast, uh, you know, it's going to be a little different at this Borscht Belt from what people saw at Stockton. We're going to be on open table. We have 24 reserved seats, highly composed plated dishes, um, you know, amazing, unique Benedict and chocolate babka French toast and matzo brise and amazing egg sandwiches and, and uh, uh, scrambles and other things that are just truly uh, Nick has taken the time to just create these dishes that we didn't have over there. Um, we're going to have um the general line we're going to be using technology as like i said so when you come in we're going to have the ability um we'll have our express window uh we have an app uh that we've built through my our other company visible which will be an express app for just in time uh pickup um for what what you want and if you don't want to wait online we'll have mobile ordering stations so you can actually if you don't want to wait online you want to look at the food and order right there at the at the screens you can do that We'll have an express station. We're going to be bringing in um, a, a great coffee program from my favorite coffee place at a Portland, or Oregon, um, Stumptown Coffee. And uh, we're going to be the first of its kind in this region outside of New York City, which is uh, truly awesome. And um, we'll have uh, Nitro on tap and some just great uh, coffee options to go with your uh, your food. Um, then you can wait online just like in you know the deli. And go through, we're going to have about, I think, 16 different types of fishes um, from, you know, Icelandic salmons and Aura King salmons and Scottish salmons and uh, different types of herrings and uh, sturgeons and sables and, and just truly trying to, to um, you know, bring back the highlights of, of some of the great appetizing that you used to see in New York City, um, you know, in the, uh, you know, mid-century and bringing back some of those great fishes out there. Our sandwiches, knock your socks off. Our, our house steamed pastrami and corned beef uh, done, you know, uh, Katz's style more like that, that, you know, thicker New York, you know, fat rendering style. But you can have the option of lean if you prefer that. We were able to do that. Nick's house roast meats are amazing from his turkeys to his, to his briskets and roast beefs. The brisket is amazing. It reminds me of Second Avenue Deli in New York, but Nick put it just a, a, a fabulous spin on it. It's one of my favorite things. And he goes into these creative dishes. Like we have the bond mitzvah, which is like a brisket bond me. We have Jackie Mason's Cuban, which is like, you know, corn tongue and salami, but look, you know, I'm pressed challah bread with the pickles and mustard and everything you'd find in Swiss on a Cuban. The iconic dish of the Catskills, um, uh, oddly enough, the iconic dish of the Catskills was the RPG, the roast pork on garlic bread, which seems odd for a Jewish deli, but, you know, it was just a, a truly iconic sandwich out there. Um, and so we're going to be doing that, uh, char siu roast pork, um, you know, sauce on garlic bread with uh, pickled cucumbers and uh, really bringing back some of those iconics. So you can get your classics, you can get your Rubens and Rachel's, which are amazing. Um, you can get um, your more composed dish. And for the holidays, you know, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately we, we, we missed Passover by a couple of weeks this year, but we were preparing for it. And then some more delays uh, that we had delayed us a couple of weeks, but um, our holiday dishes that Nick's does from our, roast chicken to our briskets to vegetables to the, you know, the, um, 
you know, and anything is his matzo crack is is tremendous, and our matzo ball soup and the staples. It's just, it's I, I get so excited every time I, I I look at what we're producing out there, and then our customers and their experience and the feedback that we've gotten on on bringing this genre of food to a a totally different level. And Nick, you know, just his 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 passion for um you know for this food and. And the Jewish culture is just, is just bar none uh, refreshing every time, you know, I get to be a part of this. Yeah. So all that being said, you just built so much excitement into it. And as we're running short on time here, before I give my final kudos to the two of you, um, tell our listeners kind of an expected date and where they could find you and where they could find you online. Well, you can go to theborschbelt.com. You can follow our social media on Facebook and Instagram, uh, which is at the Borscht Belt. Um, you could get some updates. I'm actually on the board of the Borscht Belt Museum, which is opening in a couple of weeks up in Ellenville, New York. And so we're going to be part of the first Borscht Belt Fest up there. So if you're up in the Catskills yeah. over there, the Borscht Belt's going to be a big part of that. We're in Newtown, Pennsylvania, Bucks County. And um, we we uh, we have our catering van now, so you can see us on the road. Uh, and you can expect us opening. Hopefully, right now our timeline is the end of April, um, and and hopefully we can meet that. Uh, our first timeline was summer twenty twenty two, but uh, there was just a little too much red tape uh, for that. But what you're going to expect is just um, a, a foodie dream. Um, you you know you don't have to be part of the jewish culture to to like this food this is the you know the, the the cuisine that we're putting out is just made for people that love great food and want to be and, and are passionate about food and experience they're going to get that top-notch cuisine and one more thing we're bringing a, a, a higher element to this food so we're going to have these tiered towers that you can order um and and it's just an elevated um opportunity to enjoy this you know this cuisine and we we hope that Everyone could join us, be a part of it. You can expect comedy shows, um, book readings, and other things that are just um, uh, great entertainment. We're going to bring the piano player, keyboardist from Sammy's Romanian Steakhouse, uh, Danny Love from New York in. Uh, so really just, uh, you know, the iconic, um, you know, uh, fixtures that you would see back in the day, you know, in New York and the Catskills brought back here to life and hopefully expanded around the U.S. as we start the franchise. Mike, thank you so much. And I want to do one final shout out as we close out that you can hear the passion of Mike's voice. You're talking about an individual here who you may or may not know who is so focused on the community, is a mentor as well as a board member at one of my favorite playhouses, the Bucks County Playhouse. So here is a businessman who is vested in the community. Mike, thank you for joining us on Food Farms and Chefs. I cannot wait to be at the Borscht Belt. I look forward to it, and um, I will certainly find you and introduce myself when I'm up there. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the time, guys. Thank Take you care. so much.